Hey, this is Sahas Kata from ScatterTech, and today I want to show off five brand new features that Android 3.0 Honeycomb offers for tablets. And we're going to be using the brand new Motorola Zoom, and uh, the first feature we're looking at is the home screen. It's been completely redesigned, it's very responsive, and it's got a brand new highlighter blue Tron theme. And uh, there are five home screens for holding all your widgets and uh, application icons. And these are actually very interactive. This YouTube widget lets you scroll through it. When you install the CNN app, it has a similar uh, stories widget that gets bundled with it. And uh, Google Books over here. And there's a Gmail one. Uh, your bookmarks also available with thumbnails. A calendar widget, as well as a music one at the bottom right there. Uh, Google also offers one for the marketplace to check out featured applications. And uh, the final one I want to show you is the fact that it actually runs and supports existing widgets from smartphones. And this is TweetDeck on the top two, right? And uh, Pandora is at the bottom. But um, I also want to show off how you add a widget to a home screen. And uh, you just find some free space, hold your finger down on the screen. It brings up this pretty impressive uh, application drawer with all the previews of widgets that are available. When you hold down, you can drag to a screen of your choice, and if you hold it there for a second, it actually lets you pick the position on a grid as well, which is a really neat touch. And when you head back there, you can use the widget as and move it around if you need to as well. And uh, I want to also show off adding an application. Uh, if you click on the apps link at the top right, this is the actual application drawer which contains all the applications that you have on your device. You can scroll left and right and uh, you get a view of all those that are available. And if you want to actually add one to the home screen, you do something similar. You hold down on one and it gives you a preview of those screens. And if you hold down on the particular screen, it gives you all the uh, grid layout for positioning that as well. It's very easy, it's convenient, and uh, it's a great addition that um, users will definitely appreciate. The second thing I want to show off is voice actions by Google. This thing is, has been available on Android 2.2 smartphones for some time, but it's just so impressive that I think it makes uh, the experience so much better on even tablets that it's worth demonstrating. Uh, you can say things like go to ScatterTech and it will actually bring up a web page in one click. Go to ScatterTech. And keep in mind, I haven't programmed this in. This is just right out of the box, so you can pick up any Android smartphone or Honeycomb tablet, and uh, it should work perfectly without any uh, customization or training required. And you can even say things like set an alarm clock. Set alarm for 6 a.m. And uh, if you notice, set one for 6 a.m., which is 13 hours from now. I'm going to delete that because I don't want to wake up that early. And uh, we can also do stuff like set alarm for 10 minutes. Set alarm for 10 minutes. So the time right now is 4.40 and it set it for 4.50, so it's pretty smart. And uh, finally, the last thing is you can actually compose an email with voice actions as well, which is pretty neat. Note to self, how are you doing today? And it should open up the Gmail application and uh, type all my text right in. Yep, so it has me in the email and uh, has the text, how are you doing today? And we're going to delete that. And uh, that's, that's voice actions for you. The next thing I wanted to show off, or the third thing I want to show off, is the applications that Google bundles with Honeycomb. These have been uh, vastly improved, and uh, the first one I want to show off is uh, the Music Player app. And if you notice, it's got a brand new uh, cover flow uh, interface, and uh, it's very responsive, which I love about it once again. And it also has views for albums, uh, which is also very responsive, and uh, you can scroll through things very easily. And uh, same applies for artists, which is also very similar. And uh, Google actually bundled a bunch of songs uh, with the tablet, which I don't know if it's default for everyone, but um, my review unit at least has uh, these by default. And uh, the next thing I want to show off is the calendar application, which does something neat, which I haven't seen other tablets do. And that is zooming in and out. You can actually crunch the calendar together entirely to get an entire view of your entire day at once. And if you actually want to uh, zoom in on a cluttered event, especially when two things are overlapping, it actually makes that real easy um, by letting you zoom in. And of course, there's a day view, a week view, and a month view at the top, which is a pretty neat touch. And you can side scroll for uh, the next week as well. And uh, you can select and unselect multiple calendars on the right, on the fly, which is pretty neat. 
Uh, the next thing I want to show off is the YouTube application. This thing also has a completely brand new design, which is uh, pretty impressive in my opinion. Uh, this is actually the video play view, and uh, it plays a video at the top right, uh, top left, sorry, and uh, there's a description at the bottom left, uh, comments on the right uh, sidebar, related videos as well, and another tab. And uh, if you click on that, it brings up another video, which is pretty neat. And uh, the other thing I want to show off is the cover flow view that it has for this, which is very impressive. You can scroll through and uh, check out the most popular applications that you've subscribed to or recommended for you, which is pretty neat. And uh, then we can head over to the Google Books app, which also has a new design. You can scroll through a circular view of your books available in your library. You click on one and uh, has a page flip thing similar to the iPad and uh, it's very responsive once again and the text is very easy and clear to read and uh, for people who have a hard time reading it you can actually make the font larger or smaller and cho choose a different font uh, just the brightness as well as uh, switch to a night view and things of that sort which is pretty neat in my opinion and uh, if you head back to the home screen the final thing I want to show off is the maps application this thing also has been redesigned. It's very responsive once again, like most of the applications. And uh, one thing it has that I haven't seen uh, the iPad or other tablets offer so far is 3D buildings. And if you zoom in just enough, um, these things begin to load. And uh, if you notice, it just brought up a bunch right now. And uh, I can actually pick two fingers down to actually bring up a whole city of applications. And if you just pan over, it just buildings keep popping up, which is a very, very neat touch. And uh, it really helps uh, making uh, finding directions uh, very easy for people. And uh, actually, I want to show off one more thing. The Android Marketplace also has a brand new design, which is uh, worth uh, showing off. Uh, there's a featured gallery at the top, which scrolls through. And uh, each and every pane is actually modular. So you can actually scroll through this section here. And you can actually scroll through categories on the right. If you head over to, like say, the top three applications, we can select an application we want to install. So if you select Google Earth, it gives a description right at the top, uh, screen grabs right below, and uh, even reviews all from one interface. The fourth thing I really wanted to show off is what makes Honeycomb what it actually is today. And that is the multitasking, the notifications panel, and uh, the quick settings, which is pretty neat. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually open up, let's say, this music application. And let's say I'm browsing for a song. And uh, an email comes in, which I just sent myself. Uh, it actually doesn't interrupt my workflow, which is something I truly love about Honeycomb. It should pop up with an icon at the bottom right without bothering me, and it even brings up my face. And uh, if you have contact photos for all your friends, uh, it will actually do that. And if you click on the Gmail icon, you can actually switch over to the email view to check out what just happened. And uh, that's something I really enjoy uh, about Honeycomb. Uh, it does that without disrupting you at all. And uh, there's also a quick setting panel right here at the bottom right. Uh, one click off it and you can bring up the quick settings and uh, you can lock the screen orientation, adjust the brightness, disable notifications, or even switch over to airplane mode if you're in a place that doesn't allow wireless connectivity. And uh, one more thing you can check out is a multitasking button, um, which is the third one at the bottom left. And uh, this thing lets you select the most, uh, one of the uh, five most recent applications you've been using and head over there to uh, check that out and uh, we can switch back. Uh, almost instantly between them uh, without too much interruption. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up for the notification section. The fifth and final thing I want to show off is the interaction you get with your computer without cables. And to do that I'm going to switch over to my Google Chrome notebook uh, over here on the right. And uh, I'm browsing the Android Marketplace which is just a web, uh, web page which you can visit on any computer whether it's a Mac or a PC and uh, you can actually just hit one button and uh, install an application without having to connect your uh, device to with a cable and uh, right here I can select this Google body application just to demo this I can select on the zoom and uh, if I hit the install button right at the bottom right um, I can actually, it will actually send this application to my uh, zoom instantly and if you pan back over here if you notice at the bottom right a little download arrow appeared and if you click on that you notice the application is already almost done downloading and uh, it's installing and I didn't have to do anything more than that. So while that's happening I'll switch back over to the Chrome uh, notebook again to show off another feature. Uh, let's say I'm in uh, uh, Google News and uh, I'm reading an article on uh, the USA Today 
and uh, if you notice, um, uh, the time is getting pretty late, and I want to head to work and read this on my tablet. So uh, usually, uh, doing this would not be very easy, but uh, with the latest Google uh, Chrome to Phone extension at the top right, you can actually simply click on this icon right here at the top right, and when you do, it will send the page to your phone, and if you pan back over to your computer here, I mean your tablet here, it will actually load that web page instantly. 